Hello. Welcome to the topic 3 of the Unit Fundamentals of Information Technology. And for this week, I'm going to discuss Chapter 7 of the book Computer Fundamentals entitled Processor and Memory. In this chapter, you will learn about internal structure of processor, memory structure, determining the speed of a processor, different types of processors available, determining the capacity of a memory, different types of memory available, and several other terms related to the processor and main memory of a computer system. Have a look with this. We have discussed last time that the brain of the computer is central processing unit, and it consists of two. We have control unit and arithmetic logic unit. And you are going to see here that there are different types of registers and their control unit. And we have registers under arithmetic logic unit, which we're going to discuss later on. And on top, we have different types of main memory of the computer. We have ROM, PROM, and EPROM. And between the main memory and the central processing lies between them is a cache memory, which we're going to discuss also later. Let's proceed. The central processing unit as a review. I told you last topic that CPU is the brain of the computer system. It performs all major calculations and comparisons. And this part of the computer system activates and controls the operations of other units of a computer system. As a review of control units, it acts as a central nervous system of a computer system. It selects and interprets program instructions and coordinates execution. Just what I have told you, there are some special purpose registers and there is a decoder to perform the activities of the control units. As a review of what is arithmetic logic unit, it is a unit where an actual execution of instructions takes place. And it has some special purpose registers and has necessary circuitry to carry out all the arithmetic or mathematical and logical operations included in the CPU and instruction set. What is this instruction set? CPU has a built-in ability to execute a particular set of machine instructions, and these are called instruction sets. Most CPUs have 200 or more instructions in their instruction sets. And take note of the CPUs made by different manufacturers, so therefore they have different instruction sets. Registers are special memory units. They are used to hold information on a temporary basis as instructions are interpreted and executed by the CPU. And registers are part of the CPU, not on the main memory of a computer. And the land is in Word. And there are two types of uh, registers in a CPU with a 32-bit register which can process twice larger than one with 16-bit register. So these are the common functions of some registers used. We have memory address. It will hold the address of the active memory location. We have memory buffer, which will hold information in its way to and from of the memory. We have con program control which will hold address of the next instruction to be executed. We have accumulator, which accumulates results and data to be operated upon. And we have instruction. It will hold an instruction while it is being executed. And we have inputs output, which will communicate with I.O. devices. So the execution of instruction, this is the flow. Control unit takes the address to the next program instruction to be executed from program control register and reads the instruction from corresponding memory address into the instruction register. It will be followed by the control sending of the operation and the address parts of the instruction to the decoder and the memory address register. Next. The decoder interprets the instruction and accordingly the control unit sends command 
signals to the appropriate unit for carrying out the task specified in the instruction. As each instruction is executed, address of the next instruction is loaded, and the steps will be repeated. Let's proceed to the speed of the processor. So computer has a built-in system clock that, that emits millions of regularly spaced electric pulses per second and known as clock cycles. So it takes one cycle to perform a basic operation, such as moving a byte of data from one memory location to other, and shorter the clock cycle, the faster the processor, and it has a speed of, to be measured in megahertz or gigahertz. We have types of processors. We have complex instruction set computer. The features are large instruction sets. It is variable length instruction, complex and expensive produ produce, and mostly used in personal computers. And we have reduced instruction set computer, a small instruction set, fixed, in fixed length instructions, which we're going to define later, and reduced references to memory or retrieve operations. And these are mostly used in workstations. We have explicitly parallel instruction computing. It allows software to communicate explicitly to the processor when operations are parallel and uses tighter coupling between the compiler and the processors. And these are mostly used in high-end servers and workstations. We have multi-core processor. Multi-core processor or processor chip has multiple cooling running, more energy efficient processing scores, and improved overall core performance by handling more work in parallel. And these are mostly used in high-end servers and workstations. Power efficient processors, manufacturers of computer systems have made attempts to reduce power consumption systems by applying demand-based switching or DBS. The purpose of this is to reduce power consumptions because power processors based on DBS technology are designed to run at multiple frequency and voltage settings. So processors automatically switch to a and operate at the lowest setting that is consistent with optimal application performance. Let's discuss about main memory. So every computer has a temporary storage built into the computer hardware. So it stores instructions and data of a program mainly when a program is being executed by the CPU. So this temporary storage is known as main memory, a primary storage, or simply memory. So it consists of some chips, either on the motherboard or a small circuit board attached to the motherboard of a computer, and it has random access property, and it is volatile. So we have here the differences between primary storage and secondary storage in terms of the following properties. We have storage capacity, primary storage is small, while secondary storage is large. And in terms of access time, primary is fast compared to secondary storage, very slow. In terms of cost per bit of storage, primary is high, while the secondary is low. And in terms of volatility, primary is volatile, whereas secondary storage is then volatile. It means no power supply is needed and the data will not be lost. Access, random access for the primary, while for secondary, they're using pseudo-random access or sequential access. The main memory of the computer is organized by having an address as of the memory, and these are the words of a memory, and each word contains the same number of bits or word in length. Machines having smaller word length are slower in operation than machines having large word length. So there are two commands, a write and read. A write to memory location is destructive to its previous contents, while a read 
from a memory location is non-destructive to its previous contents. So let's differentiate between fixed word length and a variable word length. Fixed word length storage space is always allocated in multiples of word length. Faster speed of calculation than variable word length memory. So normally used in a large scientific computers for gaining speed of calculations. While variable length, so take note with memory becoming cheaper and larger day by day, most modern computers employ fixed word length memory organizations. So this is variable length to address space. So memory capacity of a computer is equal to the number of bytes that can be stored in its primary storage. So 0 and 1 are what you call bits. So there will be 8 bits in 1 byte. And there will be 1024 bytes in 1 kilobyte. And how many bytes in megabits? This is the value. And how many bytes in the gigabits? These are the values. There are types of memory chips. We have volatile and writable. We, that is having two types. We have static or SRAM and we have dynamic. And for non-volatile and read-only, we have the ROM and user program. And and the user program, we have PROM and EPROM. And these are the types of EPROMs. Random access memory. It is the primary storage of a computer is often referred to as the RAM because of its random access capability. So RAM chips are volatile memory. The additional RAM chips which plugged into special sockets of a motherboard and this is known as single inline memory modules. So a computer's motherboard uh, is designed in a manner that the memory capacity can be enhanced by adding more memory chips. And we have read-only memory or ROM. ROM, a non-volatile memory chip. Data stored in a ROM can only be read and used, and they cannot be changed. So ROMs are mainly used to store programs and data which do not change and are frequently used. For example, system boots program. Okay. We have here types of ROMs. We have manufacturer program ROM. Usage for this data is burnt when a Mac manufacturer of the electronic equipment in which it is used and we have user program ROM or programmable ROM we are here can be used for the user can load and store read-only programs and data in it and we have EEPROM the user can erase information stored in it and the chip can be reprogrammed to store new information we have also Ultraviolet EEPROM, a type of EEPROM chip in which the stored information is erased by exposing the chip of some time to ultraviolet light. And we have electrically EEPROM or EEPROM or known as flash memory, a type of EEPROM chip in which the stored information is erased by using high voltage electric pulses. The term cache memory it is commonly used for minimizing the memory processor speed mismatch. It is an extremely fast, small memory between CPU and the main memory, whose access time is closer to the processing speed of the CPU. And this type of memory it is used for temporarily store very active data and instructions during processing. So that's all for this topic. And we have here some words and phrases that you are going to define and put it in your summary notes. And answer my three questions for your reflection. First one, what are the salient thoughts you've learned today? Second question, how do you feel about them? And third question, what are the things that are not clear to you? Write your reflections or answers in the Microsoft Word document and send it to the email address written in your unit information guide or UIG. Now that's all and have a nice day.